All right, hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Humbert here, and today we're going to be doing unit one, uh, sorry, unit three, notes five. So we're gonna be going over the rules when it applies to negative exponents. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just start by taking a look at our um, negative rules of negative exponents. So you're gonna invert the location of the term with the negative exponent, and once you do that, it makes the exponent positive. So I just like to look at that as flipping. So you're really just going to be flipping the location. If it'll let me type, okay? So then, so here's an example. So for example, if I have a to the negative first divided by b to the negative first, I'm going to be flipping where both of those are located. So the b to the first is going to come up to the top, and that's going to make it positive. And the a to the first is going to come to the bottom, and that's what's going to make it negative. So that's going to flip and become b over a. Now there's something that's really important when it comes to working with these negative exponents. And that's that you need to remember when you're dealing with negative exponents that you're just flipping the location of the variable with the negative exponent. You're not going to be flipping things that don't have negative exponents, including coefficients. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by taking a look at what that's going to look like for us. Okay, So let's go ahead and take a look at number one. So for number one, I notice that I have four times a to the negative two. Well, I notice that the four doesn't have a negative, so that's actually going to stay right where it is on top. But this a to the negative two, it's negative on top, so I need to flip it to the bottom. So whenever there's no bottom written, um, you can just assume that it's over 1, okay? So then I need to take that a to the negative 2, and I'm going to flip it to the bottom, and that's going to become a to the positive 2. So I have 4 divided by a over 2. All right, taking a look at this next one. For number 2, I notice x to the negative 1, that bottom 1, okay, so that x is the only thing with the negative number. So that's what's going to flip up to the top. So when I do that, I have 1 x to the 1, divided by 3. So notice I didn't flip the 3, I just flipped the x because that's what has the negative exponent. So now we're just going to write that out. 1x to the first is just x, and then that's going to be divided by 3. You could write it this way, but this is technically the more, I guess, so normal, so to speak, um, math way that you would kind of be seeing that, okay? So let's go ahead and let's take a look now at number three. So for number three, I notice that I have b to the negative two on the bottom. So that needs to come up top. So I have 6a, and then I'm going to flip that b to the second to the top, and then that's going to be over one. But really, 6ab squared is going to be 6ab squared. I don't need to write the over 1. Now, let's say, for example, the top cancels out to 1. You can't just not write the top, because otherwise we won't know that the bottom is a bottom. But when the 1 is on the bottom, you can just cancel it out and just write what was left after that. Okay. Now, let's take a look at number 4. So we need to flip the location of the b, so we'll flip that down to the bottom, and then the a is going to need to come up top. So I'm going to have 4, and then a squared, and then my b is going to flip to the bottom to give me b to the third. So then I have 4a squared divided by b to the third. So that's the final answer for number 4. So let's just talk briefly about this simplified property. So if you've seen the directions to simplify the monomials, here's a checklist of the things that we are looking for. So we're looking that each base is going to appear exactly once. We have no powers of power, so I don't want to have a squared raised to the second power. We want to get rid of those powers of powers. All fractions are in simplest form, so you need to reduce any fractions. And lastly, we cannot have any negative exponents. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of those examples. So first of all, let's take a look at number five. So for number five, remember when you're multiplying monomials, you're going to add the um, exponents. So we're going to do that. So when you're multiplying monomials, you are going to multiply the coefficients. So we do need to take two times seven, which is 14. And then the x to the third and the x to the negative one are actually both located on top, so to speak. And so I can actually add those exponents. When I have x to the third times x to the negative one, that's just going to become x to the second when I add those exponents. And now, since I've added it, I've actually done away with my negative exponents altogether. So that 14x squared is actually going to be my final answer. 
So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 6. So we're going to take and we're going to multiply negative 5 times 12. So negative 5 times 12 is going to give me a negative 60. And then we have a to the 4th times a to the 1st. Remember that when there's no exponent, the exponent is 1. So then you're going to add those exponents and you're going to get a to the 5th. And then we're going to have b to the negative 6 times b squared, and I get b to the negative 4th. Now, if we reference back to our checks list, this has a negative exponent, which means it's not entirely simplified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to flip that b to the negative 4th to the bottom. So I'm going to create a bottom just for that b to the 4th. And then when I flip it, I have a positive on that bottom. So that right there is your final answer. a and b cannot be simplified together because it's too different letters. So let's take a look at number 7. So now we're just going to kind of do some flipping around. So I have d to the negative 5, that's going to have to come up top. I have b to the negative 3rd, that's going to have to come to the bottom. So my c squared is going to stay where it is because it doesn't have a negative exponent. And then my d to the 5th is going to come up top and then it's going to become positive. And then I'm going to flip my b to the 3rd down to the bottom, so I'm going to have a positive b to the 3rd on the bottom. So that's my final answer for number 7. Now, let's take a look at number 8. So first of all, for number 8, I can reduce the fraction negative 3 over 21. Both of those are reduced by 3. So I'm actually going to make this become negative 1 over 7. So now I see that I have a lot of negative numbers, so I kind of like to deal with it as a rotation. So I'm going to start on the top. So I see that that a to the negative 4th is negative on top, so I'm going to flip it to the bottom. So then that b to the 7th is going to be on top. And then a squared on the bottom, since it's positive on the bottom, I'm going to keep it on the bottom. b to the 7th, positive on the bottom, so I'm going to keep it on the bottom. And c to the negative 5th, negative on the bottom, so I'm going to flip it to the top. So now I'm ready to do some reducing. Well, first of all, immediately I notice that b to the 7 over b to the 7, I can actually cancel out. Okay, those two cancel each other out. So left up top, I have negative c to the 5th. I don't have to write the negative 1. You can if you want to, but you definitely don't have to. And then I'm going to have 7. And then on the bottom, I have a to the 4th times a squared. So I'm going to add those together, and I'm going to get a to the 6th. So that's my final answer for number 8. So look at how long it started, and we really simplified it down to a fraction that is quite a lot smaller. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 9. Again, the first thing I like to do is to reduce my fraction. So negative 3 and negative 12. First of all, those two negatives are going to become a positive. Now, notice the difference. These are negative coefficients. So I'm not flipping them to the bottom because they're not negative exponents. They're just negative numbers. And in fact, they cancel each other out. So 3 divided by 12, well, 12 and 3 are both divisible by 3. So that's going to become 1 fourth. Okay, so then I have q to the negative 2 on top, so I'm going to flip that q to the bottom. Again, just working my way around. Then r to the first is going to stay up top, s to the fourth is going to stay up top because they are positive up there. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have this q to the first that will stay on the bottom because it's positive. R the negative 3, I'm going to flip to the top since it's negative on the bottom. S to the negative 5, I'm going to flip to the top since it's negative on the bottom. So now let's go ahead and let's simplify that out. So I have 1. Oh, a highlighter. How cool. Okay, so I'm going to take out that 1, and I'm going to have R to the 1st times R to the 3rd. So you add those together, and you're going to get R to the 4th. S to the 4th times S to the 5th, you're going to get S to the 9th. Again, remember when you multiply, you add those exponents. Then on the bottom, Q squared times Q to the 1st, that's going to give me Q to the 3rd. And then I'm still going to have that 4 there. So that right there is my final answer for number 9. Okay, so let's take a look at number 10. Again, on number 10, it's important to remember that negative 6 is just a negative number. It's not a negative exponent that you need to flip. So 24 divided by negative 6 is going to give me a negative 4 up top. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that, but I'm going to still leave space for a bottom. So I have x to the negative 2 right here, so I'm going to go ahead and write that on the bottom. y to the 4th up top, I'm going to write that up top. And then x to the negative 3 on the bottom, I'm going to flip that up top. y to the negative 2 on the bottom, I'm going to flip that up top. And then z to the negative 1 on the bottom, I'm going to flip that up top. 
So now I need to do some reducing. So I have negative 4, and then I have x to the third divided by x squared. So this is where we're going to use stuff from that previous note sheet, and we're going to subtract the exponents. So that's going to give us x to the first. And then we have y to the fourth times y squared. Here I can add those exponents, and then I'm going to get z to the first. So remember when the exponent is 1, you don't have to actually write in the exponent. If it helps you to write it in, you can, but it's not necessary, okay? So that's your final answer for number uh, 10. All right, let's take a look now at number 11. So what I notice about number 11 is I have an entire fraction that's being raised to the negative 1 power. So instead of distributing that in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the fraction over. Okay, now when I flip that fraction over or I get the reciprocal, that's going to change that exponent on the outside to become positive. Okay, so now, before I distribute in any exponents, I want to simplify inside the parentheses. So I have d to the fifth divided by d to the first. So I need to subtract out those exponents. So I'm going to get d to the fourth on top, and then I'm going to get c squared on the bottom. Now, that entire thing is going to be raised to the first power. Well, being raised to the first power doesn't really change our problem. Okay, so that is going to be our final answer, because raising it to the first power isn't going to affect any of the exponents. So that's your answer for number 11. Now, let's take a look at number 12. So first thing I'm going to do before I flip anything is reduce inside the fraction. So I notice I have x squared divided by x to the first. Well, that's just going to become 3x to the first up top, and then I'm going to have y to the fifth on the bottom. Now, that's being raised to the negative 2. So to help me with that negative fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this fraction over, like so. And then I'm going to raise that to the second power. Okay. Now, it's important to remember that that 3 has an exponent of 1, the x has an exponent of 1, and the y obviously has an exponent of 5. Now, when we take a power of a power, we need to multiply our exponents. Okay. So, here, y to the 5 times 2 is going to give me y to the 10th. And then 3 to the 1 times 2, that's going to give me 3 squared. x to the 1 times 2 is going to give me x squared. So the last thing I need to do is figure out what y, 3, sorry, what 3 squared actually is. Well, 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3, so that's 9. And then that's going to be x squared. So our answer is y to the 10th divided by 9x squared. Last but not least, let's take a look at number 13 and number 14. So for starters on number 13, I'm going to take this x to the negative 3 and I'm going to flip it to the bottom. So I have y to the first divided by x to the fifth times x to the third when I flip them both down. And that's going to be raised to the negative 1. Again, simplifying in that parenthesis first. So x to the fifth times x to the third is going to give me x to the eighth. And then y on top. So then that's being raised to the negative 1. So since that's being raised to the negative power, I'm going to flip where it's located. So I'm going to flip both of them so I get x to the 8th divided by y. Now they're both being raised to the negative, or now to the 1 power, and that doesn't change anything. So that's actually our answer for number 13. All right, taking a look at number 14. First thing I want to do is reduce inside the parentheses. So 4 divided by 6, in 4 divided by 6, they're both divisible by 2. So that's going to end up giving me the fraction 2 thirds. x cubed divided by x to the first is going to give me x to the fourth. Okay, then I'm going to have y to the first, and I'm also going to take this y to the negative 2 and flip that up top. And all of that is going to be raised to the negative 2 power. So then I'm going to get 2 thirds x to the fourth, and then y to the first times y squared is going to give me y to the third. And that's to the negative 2 power. So now I need to flip where everything's located. So 3 is going to come up top. And then I'm going to get 2x to the 4th. And then y to the 3rd. And that's going to be raised to the 2nd power. Because I flipped it, now I've gotten rid of that negative. So each coefficient also has an exponent of 1. So 3 to the 1 times 2 is 2. 2 to the 1 times 2 is 2, x to the 2 times 2, or 4 times 2, sorry, is 8, and y to the 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 squared is going to be 9, 2 squared is going to be 4, and then we have x to the 8th, y to the 6th. 
So that right there is our final answer for number 14. So that concludes your note video for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for listening.